Um, thank you so much. It really is an honour to be here today and I am learning so much because I am ashamed to say that I'm probably the most cavalier person when it comes to my diet you have ever met because my path to veganism comes through Essex. So I, I don't really think too much about what I eat and I qualify that very quickly because I sound really stupid when I'm sitting on panels with kind of experts and I'm saying I don't really know, I don't really know. Um, I've got 500 mouths to feed back at the sanctuary so mine is very often the last one I'm thinking about and also I truly and honestly believe that I've travelled around the world and I feel that I am very, very blessed to live in a country where I have enough food. It's not an issue to think where's the next meal's coming from. To, so to kind of be nitpicky about, oh, what's this and what's that, it doesn't really sit very well with me. And in fact, if I actually told people what I eat and how I eat, it would probably make your hair stand on end. So I'm just <laughs> going to leave that well alone. So to tell you a little about myself, um, I don't know if this slideshow is going to roll, so I'm thinking that um, I might roll it myself. Um, a couple of years ago, the film director, Keegan Coon, contacted me. Now, if you don't know Keegan, he made Cowspiracy and What the Health. I thought it was a bit of a wind-up, and he said, you know, I want to make my next film about you. And I'm thinking, why on earth would anyone want to make a film about me? It's just ridiculous. And then he said, well, I think in all his travels and meeting people, I was the best example of an extremely long-term <laughs> vegan doing and continuing to do extreme things. So I said, OK, we'll make this film. Um, so to tell you a little about myself, um, I went vegetarian when I was three years old. It was totally self-inspired. I am not going to say decision. It, was, it couldn't have been a decision at that age. It was a reaction, a simple reaction. I loved animals. What kid doesn't love animals? I mean, let's be right, multi-million pound industries are found on Peppa Pig. If you were actually going to watch a... What kid would watch a Peppa Pig cartoon and then say, today, Mummy, Daddy, George and Peppa are going down the abattoir because some nasty humans have come and ca captured them and going to slaughter them. What kid wouldn't be vegan if they knew the truth? And I feel very, very blessed that for some reason in me, I've always known this truth. So I was vegetarian. We never had real milk in the house because that was something that my mum never had. But I was vegetarian and I started to ask my mum questions as I became a little bit more articulate. Um, so, you know, eggs and leather and we take these. Well, why do we get these from the animals? And I was very, very fortunate in that my mum chose to tell me the truth. She explained. This was back in the 1970s. I didn't say to my mum I want to be vegan. I wouldn't even know what a vegan was. I just knew the principle behind what I wanted. We were fortunate at that time in that my mum um, was a very, very good pianist and she went to a grammar school where the music teacher there was a vegan lady and she might as well, on my mum's reflection, have been an alien. The young children, the young students had to serve the teachers their lunch and uh, it was kind of, oh, go and feed Miss Ball, Miss Ball, she's one of the vegans, she's really weird, you know. But my mum was able to keep in contact with her and she was able to articulate in an adult way what I was feeling as a child. And uh, there were no products available, very, very few products available. Um, so what I didn't realise at the time, because I'm learning now, I'm, I'm actually kind of finding reasons behind the reactions I was having at the time, is that my mum was just creating a really, really healthy, whole food, plant-based diet without really knowing it and she did it by experiment. Um, so, um, that, apart from that, I mean, I, I would also like to address the issue about vegan privilege. If I were to tell you that I do not come from some bohemian background where anything went in the house, my mum was a nurse after being... She wasn't good enough to be a concert pianist, she was a music teacher. And my dad was a striking minor, so money was a real issue when dad was on strike. That didn't stop me being vegan. It didn't affect the veganism. The one thing that did affect the veganism that I was a very, very athletic child, loved, always loved to be outdoors. In fact, somebody once said to me, oh, you probably don't need to bother with supplements. You spend all your time grubbing about outside in the dirt. So I think they were looking at, they were probably referring to B12 and vitamin D. Um, but um, I had a lot of orthopaedic surgeries, many orthopaedic surgeries in my teenage years, which resulted in my having my kneecap removed on my right side and me being told I would never walk again properly, let alone run. Um, what it did flag up when I was in and out of hospital is my vegan diet to medical professionals and my veganism was um, likened to an eating disorder that's what it was considered to be and my mum um, and she had, she has kind of 
I won't say not admitted this, but she's come to terms with this now. She was accused of child abuse on many, many occasions for allowing me to follow this path. And the only combat she could find is it's, cr it's actual cruelty to not tell your child the truth, to lie to your child rather than to t tell your child what is really going on. So this meant, this was back in the 80s, this meant that I was quite a long time out of school. And um, it was a question of what, what, what we're going to do with Fiona. She's been in and out of hospital. I've just got O levels, but nothing more than that. Um, my godfather, I went to a private college in Oxford um, where I, 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 I learned to be a PA and um, studied shorthand and typing. But I also got heavily involved in cycling because I was desperate to get back out there, get my leg strength up. And cycling, continuous motion, was what I could, found I could do. So uh, I competed in, you know, cycle events around the world, went to Women's Tour de France and whatever. I was a good cyclist. There's no interest in women cycling at the time. Uh, still isn't... Mo oh, that's, oh, yes, that's my little endeavours, my cow suit. Yes, that's not just what I wear for leisure around the sanctuary. Don't worry. <laughs> well, it is, but don't tell anyone. Um, anyway, um, so um, I got into cycling, came to London. Long story short, because I haven't got long, I met my partner. I'd been doing animal rescue, and I got the typical, like, loads of horses at livery yards and farms, chickens in the back garden of his house, dogs, cats, you know, all the little things that you can rescue. And then um, it had always been a dream, never thought it would become a reality reality to have an animal sanctuary because my, my veganism is kind of a, a progression it's never been some contrived thing where I've sat there mm, I must have world records by the time I saw that it's never been like that I've grabbed opportunities and when they when and where they arose because I think for a lot of the people in this room we will remember a time before social media we will remember a time when you went to a restaurant and you asked for day I say soya milk for your tea and you know let's put it like this I've learned to like black coffee you know what I mean um, but you know so it wasn't it just wasn't a term people were familiar with it, even a few years ago so um, one of the horses at the farm had a very very bad accident we'd been standing on this kind of cliff knowing we'd got to work a different model to do rescue but not really seeing that imperative having that real drive to go and do it Oscar's accident caused it to kind of jump off the cliff my mum is very very pivotal she still is today with the running of the sanctuary and helping me and supporting me um, I always tell the story to get the money to kind of go to the bank and say can we have a mortgage for this amount of money my mum was literally selling her engagement ring a piano you know my auntie Nancy had a thousand pounds in a sock under the bed for a funeral that came out, give it to Fiona for the sanctuary. There's a chance we can rescue. So um, that's when we got what is now uh, Tower Hill Stables Animal Sanctuary. Just a few acres of land. We didn't intend it to be a sanctuary in terms of an education facility to other people. It was going to be a sanctuary for our animals to live safely in. Because it as I say, it hasn't been some grand plan. My life isn't a grand plan. I might walk out of it and I don't know what I'm going to think of next. So anyway, we got the sanctuary and um, I did various little things along the way. Because I thought to myself, well, okay, I'm rescuing animals now. Now I can really rescue the kind of animals I want to rescue, the, uh, you know, the, the voiceless victims. Cattle, sheep, pigs, chickens, turkeys. The kind of animals that are hidden behind closed doors and exploited so horribly, but you can't say, actually, Mr. Farmer, can I keep my cow down at your livery yard? It's, it's sort of like a horse. It's got four legs and a tail. You know, you couldn't do that, so, but you could do it from the sanctuary. And it grew and grew and grew, and my partner toddling enough to work to pay for it. And he always used to say, you can rescue as many as you can look after yourself. Well, being a competitive little bunny along the way, I believe you me, I can rescue some animals. So it was growing and growing and growing and growing. So uh, we then started to rent land because Tower Hill Sable's only got a few acres. I mean, it's not massive. We couldn't afford anything massive. I mean, the step up from buying a property to a property with land is huge even today. So I thought, hang on a minute. I'm not the brain of Britain, but I can take in... I'm not the brain of Britain, trust me. Um, so I could take in like four animals or 40 or 400 animals, but I'm constantly hitting at the symptoms, never getting to the cause. And the cause is the abhorrent industry that is animal agriculture. So I thought, well, how, how, do, how do I do that? And I've been kind of, my life has been kind of, as I say, grabbing opportunities to unwittingly or wittingly promote veganism where I can. For instance, one of the other things that I do that people, it wasn't covered in the film, if anybody's seen the film, they don't know about me, is that I'm also um, a firefighter a retained firefighter and literally I wasn't thinking this is a burning ambition of my well, excuse me, <laughs> to be a firefighter all my life it was just that as I'm training and keeping fit for the marathon running a, a guy pulled up next to me and said oh you you look quite fit um, have you ever thought of being a firefighter 
I thought, it's not the thing I think of first, you know, oh, I must become a firefighter. But um, I considered it. I went down the local fire station as a retained officer, and I thought, well, okay, um, everything in my life has is, is got to have a double whammy function, because I'm not going to be here long. I realise that I'm going to be a long time dead, so I want to get the maximum out of everything for the animals. So I thought, hmm, if I become a firefighter, it's going to kind of take away a little bit of my time from the animals, but we can cover that because Martin can cover when I'm going to be available, which is at weekends and in the evenings and bank holidays, etc. But A, it gives me an opportunity to bring firefighting, to firefight, because it's all macho men. I mean, I'm the only woman still down the station, the only woman driver. Brings it me to bring my veganism into a forum that wouldn't necessarily think that a, a vegan woman could be a firefighter. So, so, and it also brings in extra pennies for the animals. So it's kind of a good old win there. So I joined the fire brigade. Um, but then I thought to myself, well, this still isn't enough because I want to tell the world how healthy I am and continue to be on a plant-based diet. And this was back in the early noughties. And I thought, well, what can I do? I've got no money, no spare money, and very little spare time. But at the time, well, people say, why did you pick marathon running? Because you were told you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to walk properly, let alone run. And indeed, if anybody's seen running for good, they will realise that I can't run properly either. Because when Keegan actually showed me the film, and I believe you me, I didn't actually watch it till I was dragged out to Hollywood by a rich role to sit at the front of the stage. I was actually going to put pull the old, you know, sit at the back, drop something, and an hour later appear and say, well, is it over? Did I miss it? But no, you sit next to me and you watch it. And, I'm saying, and you know, everybody's saying, well, what do you think of the film? It's great. And I'm thinking, I haven't seen it yet. I, don't, I mean, would you want to watch yourself on a screen that big? No, 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 no. Like so um, I kind of thought to myself, um, yeah, and Marathon Running had been created a platform by Paula Radcliffe. She was doing phenomenally well, producing these prodigious world record times. So this was at a time before social media, and a lot of people forget that you couldn't just say, oh, I've got an idea, I'm going to put it on Instagram, and a million people are going to like it. You had to be able to use the mainstream media, and you were either going to do something very negative, which I didn't want to do. My veganism is always about positivity, proactivism, and peacefulness, because to me, that's what my life is about. I don't want to harm anyone. I don't want to hurt anyone. I want to lead by example, but by good example, by good, honest grit. That's all I know. I'm, you know, I don't know anything else but that. <laughs> um, so I thought about the marathon being a good event, and I thought, well, as a vegan, as a woman, if I can just get round a marathon, then surely that's got to prove that you can do anything on plant-based diet. Um, and indeed it did, but I kind of, I kind of got the, well, I would say I got the running bug, because I, I don't actually like running. I, I mean, I like the fact that I can run, and I'm blessed, because that's not very nice to people who can't run. I can hardly run, I've got no talent. Um, but um, it's a hard effort, and I kind of had to make the decision. Oh, obviously, I, could, I realised I could run a bit, and I did some local short distance races, and I won them. And, and then it kind, of, it kind of triggered with me. People are coming to me now and asking me, what do you do for a living? Well, I don't do the sanctuary for a living. We don't do that for a living. But it gave me an opportunity to mention the sanctuary. Now, I will say, when I talk about the sanctuary, we have no advertising budget for anything. We only have the money goes directly to the animals. So it goes for the feed, the medications, the blacksmiths, the maintenance. We take nothing from that. We put our own money in and we still do and always will do. And people said, I remember going to House of Lords, I was getting an award and somebody from a very big charity came up to me and said, you know, about the sanctuary, now I'm telling him what we do and his drawers drop into the floor. And he said, well, you know, how do you pay for it? As, as if I was going to come around and say, oh, I've got some right little good scam on the go, I have, you know. And it's not, I said, we put our own money in, my mum's pension and then my firefighter, I'm going, his drawers drop into the floor. He said, what, you put your own money in? I said, well, of course I do. I couldn't stand there and ask somebody else for theirs if I wasn't putting my own in, could I? And he walked away from me and he said, I think you're crazy. But anyway, that's the, that's, the, that's the moral ethic that we have behind the sanctuary. So this is like when I said about investing time in the firefighting. If I think I can get a double benefit, so I thought I'm going to get free advertising for the sanctuary because people ask what you do. And it gives me an opportunity to talk about my veganism because this is at a time before the vegan runners. It's only when I started to get the really, really good results in races that a couple of guys, Dave Arnold, Peter Simpson, were saying, Fiona, you're going to be on the elite start of the London Marathon. Do you know what that means? And I'm like, no, I don't really know anything about running. I just know A to B as quickly as you can, because then you can get home and do your jobs kind of thing. You know, that's all my running is about. I am the Miss Amateur runner that's like running around the house just before I'm going out thinking, where can I locate what looks like a pair of socks or something like that? I really do not know very anything about running other than you put one leg in front of the other and hope they, hope they work, you know, 
finished. I'm really not into it in that way. Um, so he said, you're going to be on the elite start of the London Marathon. That's a great opportunity. I was running for a vegetarian cycling and athletic club at the time. But he said, you're going to be 45 minutes ahead of the main field. The men and all the other runners, apart from a handful of women, are going to start 45 minutes. You're going to be running through the streets of London. And what's on your jersey is going to be seen by everyone because there's going to be nobody around you. I thought, yeah, we fully, that's at that point, we affiliated vegan runners. And I think that's one of the things I'm most proud of because it is the most positive form of accidental activism that you could possibly have. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's, um, it's now apparently it's got 17,000 members, either running or non-running members. And, you know, you've got a captive audience there at races. People are interested in what people eat. Oh, you know, vegan. Yeah, I didn't think you could do that on a plant-based diet. So that's the vegan runner thing. So I'm not going to go on about, oh, my running, my running, because it's really boring. So what did I do when my running? Well, I, I've never had much... I've got no money for running, and I've led this really unusual life. I do have a bizarre life. It has to be to fit everything in that I do, because I get up at 3.30 in the morning. I still do all the animal care myself. We have got 92 horses, 151 pigs. 122 sheep we've got like you know uh, we've got 38 cows and just about everything in, the, in between so we've got a lot of animals so we've not got any money that's why I eat throwaway food and I just scat I'm practically a freegan so I don't really consider much about what I eat because I've got no money for any of this fancy stuff um, so anyway um, I, I just did road running because it's a simple equation. Um, I was good. I could get invited to races. So uh, Amsterdam Marathon, um, you know, Harley Gabrislas's coach rang me and Jos Herman, would you consider running the Amsterdam Marathon? We pay your expenses. You get a free trip out there. You just run two races a year. It's economically efficient for being away for the animals. I train alone. I just, I, I'm running around the Dendry Peninsula, not a runner in sight. The next minute you're on a coach with the best runner in the world looking for, uh, for a world record, walking into the Olympic Stadium, getting all your photographs taken. Then you go home and you just go back to your animal work. That's all I've ever done, just an effective form of activism, not really interested in anything else than promoting the veganism where I can. So I've got a personal best in the marathon of two hours, 38 minutes, which is, is pretty quick. In fact, sometimes I'm like, did I really run that? But I did, yeah. Two hours, 38 minutes. I've got loads of <laughs> sub-three marathons. Um, at the, at the point, I was, I was hitting major marathons, big events that would pay for you to go, two a year maximum, maximum effect to get the vegan placard out there at the front of races so i got like top 20s in london and berlin and top 10s in amsterdam gold star marathons and i thought well, okay i'm hang on a minute I'm, I'm doing really well and these are really really quick times i'm not getting I'm, I'm getting a bit of publicity for the sanctuary but i'm really not getting the promotion of veganism that i want we'll go on to that because now okay even now i notice that the press aren't entirely, yeah, they might embrace veganism to a certain extent, but they're always looking at a, no, but he went vegan and he's now dying and he's not vegan. So um, it's like veganophobia, you know, it, it, there is that, and there certainly was at the time. So I thought, what do I do? Um, do I carry on running? Big investment in time and energy and effort. I'll mix it up. I'll go and win some marathons. Went off and won a load of races. Um, still not having that effect that I want. Um, then somebody said to me, and I always reluctant to say friend because people start thinking, if your friends suggest you do that, goodness knows what your enemies suggest you do. But then I, I, somebody said, you've done all these fast marathons. You're not going to run any quicker than that. Why don't you do Marathon de Sable? Simple thing, um, trudge across the desert, 250 odd kilometres, uh, self-sufficient, backpack, um, marathon a day, one day's a double marathon, it's brutal, Bill, it is the toughest foot race on the planet. It's what the film's based on, running for good, but what the film doesn't tell you is I've actually done it twice before that. The first time I did it, because I'm literally playing a tag team with my partner at the sanctuary, um, I was working with the horses, one elderly horse charity, she got cast in a box, she went down, she couldn't get up, I pulled her to her feet two days before the race and she stood on my foot and broke two of my toes. So now I'm left with the dilemma, do I go to the Marathon de Sable um, with broken toes um, or do I sit at home and wonder what would have happened if I had have gone? Foolishly, um, I went and um, I did complete the Marathon de Sable, came mid-place. Uh, people say, what did you eat during the race? All the you know, dietitian, that. About 19 boiled sweets and a bag of painkillers is all I could manage. <laughs> and on the, on the long stage, on the long stage, I took the gaffer tape because I didn't show the doctors on the race my foot because it was so much because your feet swell in the heat unless you're used to 50 plus degree heat. Uh, you have to buy big shoes. So I felt like Coco the Clown going out there with these big long shoes. Uh, but my, my foot was swollen with the broken toes. So by 
by the long stage, you could see the bone sticking out of the little toe. It was absolutely horrendous. And people were talking about stagnant water we were going to go through the next day. Anyway, I got through it, and I thought, yeah, I really enjoyed that. You know? <laughs> I didn't. You know, rose-tinted spectacles went on when I got home. You know, I'm going back there and kill it next year. You know, but in the meantime, some, one of my other friends had said, why don't you do... The polar marathons, North Pole Marathon, Arctic Ice Marathon, Simple Pimple. Very, very difficult for me because I run the uh, 26.2 on tarmac is better for me because of the knee. I cannot run downhill. In fact, when Keegan showed me the footage of the film, I thought, I've got to look half decent. I mean, it's Sarah Desert. And, you know, and he showed it me and I'm looking, squinting away. And, I'm like, and I see this little Quasimodo figure coming out of the <laughs> limping away. And I'm thinking, oh, oh, and I thought, oh my God, it's me. Yeah, I mean, so I don't look good when I'm running at all. I know that. I'm, I'll live with that. Um, so I wasn't sure about running at the North Pole. In fact, I didn't actually think there'd be a race at the North Pole. I thought it'd be somewhere in northern Norway. We'd all pile out, pile out, do 10k, get back in, and you know that'd be it. We'd call it a marathon because let's be right, it was very cold. Anyway, I did um, the North Pole marathon. I won it, broke a world record, fastest woman to ever run a marathon at the North Pole. Uh, some of the guys there said to me, you know, why don't you kind of just do the world record? Ding, ding, ding. World records, animals, you know. Um, fastest woman to literally go to every continent and run a marathon. And, um, yeah, I mean, even there, the, the vegan haters. Oh, it's not very environmentally friendly, is it, going around the world? Well, I say, you know, I say, I'm a, I, I didn't say I was a hermit. I said I was a vegan. You know what I mean? And, you know, I, I want, I, if, if everybody else had listened to the message, um, you know, I wouldn't have to trudge off around the world. And do. But anyway, I went off around the world and did these marathons and um, I broke the world record. But what I, what I didn't understand is I thought the people at Mr. Guinness, you know, Guinness World Record, when they wanted to validate it, would say, you just come back with your results and say, I did it. Oh, no, 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 no. You had to have validators, team of people around. You, oh, we need one person running with you and one for photographing. Yes, I can't do that. We haven't got the money for this budget. So um, I, I devised that the only way I could possibly do this and get it validated was get the race to validate it for free. So go and win or place in every, every race so that they would kind of say, she's on the podium there. Of course she, we saw her run it. She's got the lead car with her. So um, I did that. Um, it was very, very difficult because these marathons were on different continents. Some were only a week apart, and I was having to come home. I was in Australia for less than four days. I went, I flew out there, got off the plane. Bloke said, are you looking for your baggage? No, I haven't got any. Oh, are you going on somewhere? No. Are you staying with someone? No. Get out of my way, I'm in order. You know, and, and he said, um, well, what are you doing here? I said, oh, oh, and I then I flagged up. I thought, this does look suspicious. I'm only here for the day. <laughs> so I thought, I can rewind. I've got a marathon in the morning. I've got good reason for being here. And he just looked at me and said, on your way, woman. You're mental. But anyway, I did the world records. I did injure my knee very badly in the Atacam, in the race that I did. Um, I combined the, North, uh, the Antarctic race with a race in... Um, um, the Atacama Desert, 14,400 feet running a marathon is not funny, up a volcano. And I rolled my bad knee. I was told that I would not uh, run again that year, let alone in five days in Antarctica. I still don't know how I did it, but I went down to Antarctica and I just did exactly what I'd done there. Podium with the men, broke the world record, that was fantastic. Um, got home, again encountered the veganophobia with the media. I'd got a national newspaper, wanted to cover the story, they thought it was fab, take your teddy bear, do all that. He was with me all the way, goes everywhere with me. And um, they said, we can't cover it. And cutting the long story short, they were saying, look, the advertisers in our papers pay our wages. It was running up to Christmas, so you've got Aldi and Lidl promoting the five bird roast and the creamy trifles. We're not going to give free advertising to a vegan cause we're not going to do that so I was very very disappointed and I think um, when I wanted to talk to you about uh, one of the things I wanted to mention is people ask me you went to Antarctica and I did go to Antarctica with a very very bad knee and I did not expect to be able to run I could hardly walk and we trudged around Punta Arenas looking for walking poles and I'm calculating how long does it take to walk, to walk 26 miles in Antarctica you know and, and I don't know what did it well I think I do it's the fact that with me with my veganism the diet is probably I even I tend to go away from the word diet when I say I'm a vegan because with the word diet people associate denial and I say I can have that I choose to not have it I don't want that in my life and um, there's a reason behind a very tangible reason behind why I'm doing what I do it's an ethical reason and I sometimes think that 
obviously I think that people do tend to do, the majority of people do things because they think it benefits themselves. I don't have children of my own, but you know, you can take your children on holiday to Disney, you can buy them fancy clothes, you can do, you can spoil them rotten, but the best thing you can give a child that I can see is a bright, bright and healthy future. And that's what I think plant-based living is all about for me, is the ethics about, for me, in my heart of hearts, I have to stand here honestly, I wouldn't care if I ate beans and potatoes for the rest of my life, so long as it didn't include an animal being harmed, I'm not bothered, it's all about the ethics. And that's what I say, my veganism is a constant learning curve. I'm, I'm, I don't know that much about anything, but at least I've got the good grace to admit it and that I'm willing to learn, rather than these kind of two minute Instagrammers that come on and pompificate all these stories with absolutely no substance or credentials behind them and then two minutes later when they've amassed this massive following suddenly turn around oh i was wrong i'm going the other way it's not about that I, I i i know i don't know very much but i want to learn more and veganism teaches me more i learn things every day and i've learned so much today i've got enough material for about 10 years from my <laughs> daughter from the next desert race so I, I know we're in a hurry and i don't want to keep anybody else from speaking I would say a couple of things at points that I wanted to highlight. My mental well-being is very good. There's lots to talk about depression. The only time I do get very, very down, I'm not going to lie, is when I see the abhorrent in images of animal cruelty on the internet. And you can get a little bit sucked into that and keep looking. And you have to withdraw away from it and go back to what you do to create positivity. Then I go back to the cow suit. That's why I run in the cow suit sometimes. If I'm just feeling a little bit different, I want to do something a little bit different, I'll rock up at a race wearing a cow suit and go and win it in it. And then people say, why are you wearing a cow suit on the hottest day of the year in a 100 kilometer race? And my answer to that is, so you would ask me why I'm wearing a cow suit, you know what I mean? And so then I can introduce you to the horrors of the dairy industry without standing there and shouting in your face, because to me, anger and negativity breeds anger and negativity back. I want people to come to me and ask. Do you see what I mean? That's, that, that's where I get a better... For me, everybody's different with, with the way they approach things. For me, I'm not a confrontational person. I just can't do that. Uh, so a couple more things about uh, me. I'm, uh, I'm on no medications. I take no medications and I don't actually take any supplements. I, I have to go to the doctors for the um, certificates for these extreme races because they do like to include repatriation of your body if you die out there when you're trying to do them. And I've got a resting pulse of 36 beats a minute, which actually, when I did see a doctor who wasn't my GP, she insisted I was going to Everest. She insisted that I see a cardiologist and she said I got severe something or other and I was going to keel over. And I went to see the cardiologist, the doctor, and he said, you should do that woman for actually um, making you, you come here because he's a private uh, doctor because I had to see him um, for the private ECG. And um, he said she, she should have asked you about your lifestyle. Obviously, somebody's going to have a very slow resting pulse if they've done what you do. And they do, I mean, I run about 100 miles a week with no bother at all. Um, so, um, to me, um, yeah, yeah, I know. Well, I won't say I'm no bother at all. I mean, I, do, I, I don't just like, oh, I'm running 100 miles a week. But I, I do do a lot already. Um, but for me, it's all about, I wanted to, my life, everything I do is about cr promoting veganism in a positive way. I've had to kind of do it kind of surreptitiously and manipulate the mainstream media because there's been no other way no other way of doing it but the message now that i want to spread i don't just want to carry on running forever because you know oh, okay i'm what my next project somebody asked me what my next project is i'm going to go and run a, a, a london marathon championship qualifying time hope to break a world record again in my cow suit um so again people actually ask me why i'm out there doing this in the berlin marathon why are you dressed as a cow and why are you up there running with, you know, kind of the good runners saying, watch me tail and don't trip over that kind of thing, or hope my ears don't drop off. But that's, I want to go out there and spread the message. And I didn't think that, you know, in my fifth decade, I'd still be able to do this. I'd still be able to run 120-something for a half marathon if I want to. Um, I, 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 you know, I've never had a running injury. I have I have been running for, with this gammy leg, I have been running for 18 years, and I... I've never had a running injury. And one of the things on reflection, the benefits um, of my plant-based diet that I can only put down to my plant-based diet is um, my recovery rate is extreme. I still train twice a day. And yesterday, uh, I had to do my speed session at lunchtime. Somebody did ask me to raise this. Um, we, we started the Vegan Running Club, and we are so proud of that club. It's so precious because it's such, such an amazing, amazing tool for the animals. And somebody said, do you think that... Um, 
uh, running in the vegan vest raises your game and it does for me because I'm out there to promote a message and I want to do it in the best possible way I can so having that emblazoned across your your I want to be able to back it up with positivity but then some people say well if you can't win the race you can't do well in it does it have the same effect well of course it does pace is all relative it's, it's very little importance the facts are you're out there and you're showing the world the benefits of plant-based living that's all I want my life to be about and if I keel over on the way home good I've done everything I can I can't do any more um, so for me I will just end up by saying I'm not a doctor I feel very humble to be around all you medical professions with all your statistics because I've got no evidence or no proof but I've only got me and I've done it all and I'm still doing it so for me um, veganism is just about it's about the future for personal health other humans health animal agriculture, the welfare of animals, the welfare of the planets. We are the custodians of this planet for future generations and we owe it to them to be spreading this message because it's got to be heard. It's, I mean, I asked Keegan when we were in the desert having one of our deep-seated thoughts, you know, and do you think it's too late? And he said, I, probably it is, but I don't want to be one of those people that's just sat down and said, oh, can't do anything about it, so I'm not going to do anything. We must drive it home. And for me effective wise for people to be hearing it from medical professionals they listen to doctors people do listen to doctors and people with expertise so i never thought in my lifetime that i would be standing here in front of uh, when you said an orthopedic surgeon i went to orthopedic surgeons many many times and as i say my mum was accused of child abuse for allowing me to be vegan. I never thought this day had come. And um, so thank you very, very much. And thank you for asking me to be part of it.